Ever wondered why planes don't fly over Tibet? It's a question that has intrigued many a curious mind. Glancing at a map, you'd think that flying over Tibet might be a shortcut for many routes. But in reality, it's a no-fly zone for commercial airlines. So, what's the story here? There are several reasons for this aviation anomaly, each as fascinating as the next. It's not just about the breathtaking altitude of the Tibetan plateau, but also the challenging weather conditions, the complexities of emergency procedures and route planning, and even some political nuances. We'll be diving into each of these factors in detail in the coming scenes, shedding light on why pilots steer clear of this seemingly convenient air corridor. So buckle up, as we're about to take a flight of discovery, navigating the intricacies of aviation over the land of snows. Stay tuned as we unravel the mysteries behind planes avoiding the Tibetan airspace. First up, let's talk about the biggest physical challenge, the towering heights of Tibet. Tibet is home to some of the loftiest peaks on Earth, including the mighty Himalayas. Many of these peaks rise above 4,000 meters, posing a formidable barrier to air travel. Now why is this a problem? Well, it's all about how airplane engines work. The engines are designed to function optimally at certain altitudes where the air is just the right density. But as we climb higher, the air gets thinner. This thin air can make it difficult for the engines to generate enough power. The plane may struggle to reach the necessary altitude for a safe flight over the towering mountains of Tibet. But there's another aspect to consider. The high altitudes can also affect the performance of the pilots. At these heights, the lack of oxygen can lead to altitude sickness, a condition that can impair a pilot's cognitive functions and physical abilities. This makes it even more challenging to navigate a plane through the lofty peaks of Tibet. And let's not forget the passengers. At high altitudes, the reduced oxygen levels can make passengers feel uncomfortable and even ill. Airlines always aim to provide the most comfortable and safe experience for their passengers, and flying over Tibet might not meet these standards. So you see, the altitude of Tibet presents a multitude of challenges to air travel. The high mountains require planes to fly at altitudes where the air is thin, making it difficult for engines to perform optimally. The reduced oxygen levels can affect the pilot's performance and passenger comfort. All these factors combined make Tibet a challenging and potentially dangerous area for planes to fly over. And while modern airplanes are equipped to handle high-altitude flights, the risks and challenges associated with flying over Tibet often outweigh the benefits. So the towering heights of Tibet pose a significant challenge to airplanes, but that's not all. Apart from the altitude, the weather in Tibet is another major deterrent for airplanes. Now let's talk about the weather in Tibet. It's a region known for its extreme weather conditions. The weather here is as unpredictable as it is harsh, and this poses a significant threat to aviation. Firstly, the region is known for its strong winds. These winds are not just gusts, they're often high-speed jet streams that can reach speeds of up to 200 miles per hour. Now imagine trying to navigate a plane through that. The turbulence caused by these winds can be incredibly dangerous, and even the most experienced pilots would rather avoid them. Then there's the issue of dense fog. Fog is a pilot's worst nightmare. It reduces visibility to near zero, making it almost impossible to see other aircraft, mountains, or the ground. In a region like Tibet, where the terrain is already challenging, the addition of fog can make flying especially perilous. But the weather woes of Tibet don't stop there. The region is also known for its sudden and drastic weather changes. It could be clear one moment and stormy the next. These rapid shifts can catch pilots off guard, giving them little time to react and adjust their flight path. Additionally, the cold temperatures in Tibet can also pose problems. The intense cold can affect the aircraft's mechanical systems, leading to potential failures. Also, icing is another concern, as ice buildup on the wings or tail can affect an airplane's aerodynamics, making it difficult to control. The weather in Tibet is a force to be reckoned with. Its strong winds, dense fog, sudden weather changes, and cold temperatures all combine to make flying over it an incredibly risky endeavor. Pilots and airlines must weigh these risks against the benefits of a shorter route, and more often than not, they choose to avoid Tibet altogether. Indeed, the unpredictable weather in Tibet can make flying over it a risky proposition. Airplanes have certain procedures to follow in case of emergencies, and route planning? That's a whole different ballgame. In case of an emergency, such as an engine failure, airplanes are required to descend to a certain altitude and find a safe area for landing. This is where Tibet's rugged terrain and high altitude present a problem. The region is known for its towering peaks and lack of flat open spaces. 
This makes it challenging if not impossible to find suitable areas for emergency landings. Even if a pilot were able to navigate the treacherous terrain, the thin air at high altitudes would make it difficult for the airplane to generate enough lift to stay airborne. The combination of these factors means that flying over Tibet significantly increases the risk of an emergency situation becoming a catastrophe. But it's not just about emergencies. Route planning also plays a crucial role in why planes don't fly over Tibet. You see, airlines are always looking for the most efficient routes, those that are the shortest and consume the least fuel. This is not just for the sake of cost efficiency, but also to reduce the environmental impact of aviation. Flying over Tibet, however, generally makes routes longer. This is because the region is surrounded by some of the highest mountain ranges in the world, including the Himalayas. Navigating around these mountains can add significant distance to a flight, leading to increased fuel consumption and higher costs. Furthermore, the unpredictability of weather in Tibet can force pilots to make last-minute changes to their flight paths, adding even more time and cost to the journey. In the world of aviation, every second and every liter of fuel counts. And unfortunately, when it comes to cost efficiency and safety during emergencies, Tibet just doesn't make the cut. Cost efficiency and safety during emergencies are paramount, and unfortunately Tibet doesn't make the cut. Lastly, we cannot ignore the elephant in the room, the political implications. Tibet, as many of you may know, is an autonomous region under the control of China. This unique political status brings with it a host of complexities. You see, Tibet has been a hotbed of political tensions for many decades. The region's quest for independence and the subsequent resistance by China has created a sensitive political environment. This has implications even for something as seemingly unconnected as aviation, Airlines in their operations must consider not just the physical and financial aspects but also the potential political repercussions. Navigating through the airspace of a politically sensitive region like Tibet could potentially open up a Pandora's box of diplomatic issues. Let's take a hypothetical situation. Imagine an airline that publicly supports Tibetan independence. This airline's decision to use Tibetan airspace could be construed as a political statement potentially leading to tensions between the airline's home country and China. On the flip side, if an airline from a country that recognizes Tibet as part of China chooses to avoid Tibetan airspace, it could be seen as a sign of disrespect to China's sovereignty. This could lead to diplomatic issues and possible business ramifications for the airline. Hence, to sidestep these potential political landmines, many airlines prefer to simply avoid flying over Tibet altogether. This approach is seen as a safer option, minimizing the risk of inadvertently stepping into a political quagmire. So when we ask why planes don't fly over Tibet, we find that the reasons are not just about mountains, weather, and cost efficiencies. They also involve the delicate dance of international politics and diplomacy. Politics, as it turns out, plays a crucial role in aviation too. So, we've covered quite a bit of ground today. We've delved into the reasons why aircraft don't typically fly over Tibet. First, we tackled the towering heights of the Himalayas and other mountain ranges in the region that make it challenging for planes to reach the necessary altitudes. Next, we examined the extreme weather conditions found in this area, including strong winds and sudden changes that can make flight operations perilous. We also discussed the critical emergency procedures that pilots must follow in case of issues like engine failure, which can be complicated by Tibet's rugged terrain and high altitude. Then, we considered the impact of route planning and cost factors, as longer routes mean more fuel consumption, and hence increased expenses for airlines. Lastly, we touched upon the political sensitivities that might dissuade some airlines from traversing Tibet's airspace. The next time you look at a flight path and wonder about its route, remember, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye.